I don't even know where to begin. It's Stacy Cole, Carol Hughes. We're talking about the return to nature funeral home yet again. Mm. Or, well, Penrose funeral home. Wait, which I'm getting them confused. Is it the return to nature or the Penrose? I read it was return to nature. Is what is Penrose? Oh, the Penrose city? is the city. Isn't yeah. It? Okay. So it is well, the return to nature, which is kind of a weird name, but it definitely implies that your loved one, you know, ashes to ashes sort of thing. So your loved one will be cared for. Well, and this was supposed to be more of an organic uh, funeral home where it, they weren't using as many toxic chemicals, too. Or well, they any. weren't using any. <laughs> I mean, when you get down to it, uh, they weren't doing anything. So I guess there were no toxic chemicals involved. And, you know, it was more of a, a natural decomposition for bodies. Yeah, they they appeared in court. So we're talking about John and Carrie Halford. They face the scrutiny of the public eye, and yet they're kind of silent about the grisly discovery of 189 de- decomposing bodies at their funeral home. 189. Yep. Yep. I mean, even right now, if you count to 189, that's a lot. Yeah, That'll a take lot. you a little bit of time. Yep. 189. Wow. Yeah. So they made their first appearance at the El Paso County Courthouse in questions lingered unanswered um journalists were basically i guess badgering them um and carrie halford chose not to address the questions posed by media her silence spoke volumes as she offered only a, an excuse me in response further fueling speculation surrounding the ghastly conditions inside their funeral home equally reticent was her husband john halford who shielded by his attorney evaded questions while reporters faced physical resistance from the legal team Amidst the courtroom chaos, families of the victims found themselves denied the opportunity to confront the Halfords as Judge William Mueller intervened to safeguard the defendant's safety. So people are getting pissed. I saw a rare. I saw a really powerful photo. I'm sorry to interrupt, but yeah, no, it was him. I don't think it was both the couple, but definitely he was in the photo. And there's a woman with a T-shirt with a photo on it, which I'm assuming is her son. And she's just screaming and he is looking forward. There's nothing on his face at all. And she's just screaming and the pain on her face just really, really moved me. I can tell you, I I think I know who this is because she has been extremely vocal as she freaking should be um, that she was given quick Crete as as her son's remains which is basically concrete mixture you know like the the stuff you make concrete out of um she's pissed she wants her son back i don't freaking blame her um the judge intervened to safeguard the defendant's safety in a rare move he ordered everybody to remain in the courtroom for 10 minutes post hearing citing previous verbal altercations involving john helford the directive underscored the heightened tensions surrounding this case emotions are running high uh, yeah, they they absolutely neglected these people's loved ones and just stacked them up like they were boxes out of a moving van, you know? The smell. And I think that's what eventually caught them was the smell. I mean, I'm going to guess they're, it, everything's motivated by money. They're yep, taking was, people's money. There's some money laundering going on here. They're not doing the job. So they just are like, we'll just keep putting them in this storage room. And it's not like a temperature-controlled room. It sounds like they just kept putting them someplace. Like, how long do you think you can do that? I mean, the smell would become so overwhelming. Well, and I can't believe that they could expose themselves to that. I have, and I've talked about it many times, and forgive me, listeners, if you're like, oh, here she goes again. But I worked in the euthanasia field of veterinary medicine for two years. I've been around um, decomposing animals where somebody waited too long to call somebody to pick up their animal. And we're talking days, just a few days, and things start to happen. So this was going on for, I'm guessing, over a year this was happening. Mm -hmm. might have been several years. The smell, it would overpower your eyes, the ammonia smell, all of it was would just be horrific. They had to have known they would have gotten caught, right? Yeah. You can't disguise I, that. No, you can't. And and now the building, 
I'm not sure if it's been torn down or not, but it's it's an EPA issue now because yeah. it's so toxic. And I, I this just hallmarks how Colorado is so behind in regulating this field. They have I, no regulations. None. And you and I, before we started recording, talked about how there's yet another funeral home in Colorado that allowed a body to decompose in a hearse for for months. Like just left it in the hearse. And Something didn't happened they need in the business. The hearse? They closed. Like, yeah. did they not need the hearse? Like Well, I think the business closed for some reason. I don't know how you go out of business being a funeral home. The the markup is insane. Um, I I understand it's a necessary service, but there's I don't know how you go broke owning a funeral home. I've known several funeral home owners and they do really well. Like beyond what you'd imagine. And it, the markup on caskets alone is phenomenal. You know, now we've got Costco and Sam's Club getting into the mix and I think you can buy one on um you can buy caskets on Amazon and and walmart.com and stuff now but for many years the only place you could get a casket was a funeral home mm-hmm. and the markup was just hundreds of percents. So there's no way to go broke doing this unless you're just really bad at business. Or you just don't care, which I think these people, they didn't even try. No. They they get um, remains in, and apparently they just ship them to that back room or wherever they were stashing them and, and what- tell the next body, and then it goes back there. and Like, they're not even trying to cremate some of them and do their and- freaking jobs. One of the things that I brought up in our earlier discussions, um, when I worked in the euthanasia field, our prices had to go up when um, natural gas went up. Because when you cremate, you're using natural gas and you're using a lot of it. So when those prices go up, your prices go up. And I'm just wondering if there was an issue where they couldn't afford to be cremating these bodies. They couldn't afford it. But they were buying cars. They were taking trips, like they said, yeah. there was a $1,500 meal, like in Las Vegas or someplace, 1500 bucks on a meal. <laughs> I don't know wow. how many people were with them. I was assuming it was just the two of them, but I might be wrong. I cringe at Taco Bell if it's more than $6. <laughs> I know, because it's like, my God, I'm eating that much today. Yeah, right. Um, but I kind of blame some of this. Well, it, the, this couple's 100% to blame. But the reason they were able to get away with it is because Colorado basically has no regulation. And so that's why these people, you know, there's been several cases similar to this in Colorado because there's no oversight. Right. They don't conduct routine inspections of funeral homes. There is no educational requirement for funeral home directions. They don't even need a high school diploma. And that is disturbing because there are so many chemicals that are used in in this field that they could create a natural disaster if they're not careful. Yeah. Like you you have to properly, there's so many things you have to properly do and pay respect to this person who has passed away, to their families. And Colorado is not holding anyone up to a standard. Colorado needs to get their shit together. Yes, they do. I mean, think about a cosmetologist, somebody who does hair. They have to be licensed because of the chemicals they're using and how they could harm somebody. And granted, these are dead bodies. They're not harming, quote unquote, anybody, a live person. But, you know, they're still impacting the environment if they're completely stupid with with how they're using the chemicals and don't understand what they're doing, they can cause some serious harm for the environment and for the people in the neighborhood. So I don't understand why this isn't regulated. This needs to change. And I think there is some, there's some proposed legislation in Colorado, but they really need to get that passed because these facilities need oversight. Mm -hmm. They need to know, you know, because you and I, like I had to recently make and they were pre-arrangements for my mother. But I had to go meet with a funeral home, prepay for everything, and which is a really weird thing to do anyway. Yeah. But I have to 100% trust 
that these people will do the right thing because Mm -hmm. you can't go in and watch like the body is shipped to them. Then they take it. Like I don't go get, you don't go get your loved one and take them yourself and watch this process. You trust it's done. And this is your loved one. And so the violation of people's trust and, and just legally all, you know, you can't just put a body in the back room that you can't do that regardless of the fact they were already dead. You know, there's, you can't, you, there's proper treatment of a corpse. And I can't remember what they were charged with now off the top of my head, but it was, it's a violation, you know? And I don't understand how Colorado got so out of control. Why, why wasn't this regulated? Why at some point didn't they say, okay, we, we've had a few incidents. We need to deal with this because this can't be the first time this has popped up. Because if there's no regulation, then you've just got riffraff in there. Anybody's going to go, hey, this is a great way to make money. Yeah, there's bodies in the back of hearses just sitting there. Yep. They, they've got to get it together because this won't quit. Oh, 100%. They're going to find, if they decide to start regulating, they're going to find some more funeral homes that are doing some really sketchy things. Maybe not to this level, but they're going to find some more and they're going to have to deal with it quickly. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers Podcast, dropping soon. Press subscribe now.